Hi designers! In the last video you used the shape tool to create your own custom shape with a holiday theme, either a snowman or a jack-o'-lantern. In this video you'll be going a little bit deeper into what the shape tools and also the pen tool can do to create an illustration. Now for my illustration I've chosen to use fruit. Um, you're going to want to choose an image that's seems really really simple and I chose this apple because it's basically a circle, a rectangle, and then another maybe an altered circle for the leaf. It seems really simple but let me show you when I went to draw it it ends up being very complex because you can't just put a circle and a stick and a circle together and make it look like an apple. So you want to start off with something uh, very simple. That way you won't get overwhelmed with the complexity of things. So before we get into how to use the pen tool and the more advanced options on the shape tool, I want to talk about positive and negative shapes because that's really the idea that we're working with here. We're taking an illustration, a photograph, and breaking it down into what's going to be your positive shape which is the red area in the apple and what's going to be your negative shape or where's the background going to show through uh, so your illustration is going to be one color because you're creating a shape layer uh, that's a solid color fill so it's just one color so when I was thinking about the apple I could have made this black or green um, or blue or whatever color but I was limited to one color I couldn't make the apple red and the stem brown and the and the leaf green I had to only think about the positive space which was the color and the negative space which is actually the background showing through the white you can really see this difference when I create a negative shape uh, logo or a negative shape illustration to where the background is being filled in. You can see over here in my layers panel where the background is red and the positive shape is the white. Um, and it, initially this is the easier way to think about it because you can very easily think of the negative shapes as the shadows um, but this is typically not how a logo design looks because lo typically a logo design is one color um, and it's usually black on white paper so if we made this logo black all of a sudden the shadows are standing out and the logo doesn't seem quite right so you want to be careful to create um, the lightest areas maybe being your negative space actually because that's where the white of the paper would show through um, and then your positive space being the actual color. Let's look at another example which is these oranges here. Um, I'm actually going only going to use one orange um, and using the basic skills that we learned last time let's break it down into shapes. You can see an oval right here so I'm going to use my ellipse tool. Make sure that you're set on shape layers which is your first option and then for the first shape that you draw you're going to use the first function which is create a new shape layer. I'm going to approximate this oval. You can see that the oval is tilted so first I need to draw the oval you can see my new shape layer pops up over here with my vector mask which is the small gray thumbnail and my color fill which again I can change to any color you might want to change it to a color that stands out from uh, the image that you're drawing and then you also want to turn the opacity down so that you can see through uh, your drawing and that's just temporarily so you can see what you're doing while you're drawing all right, making sure that I've clicked on my vector mask, you can see the brackets here. Now I can uh, transform, hold Command T on my keyboard, and begin to alter this ellipse or this oval to most closely approximate um, what I'm drawing. Since I'm drawing a fruit, the fruit isn't perfect, and the photo that you have probably isn't going to be perfect, but you just want to get your path as close as you can. Uh, to the image that you're drawing. All right, now I see another oval here, or half of an oval, and so I'm going to draw another oval, add it to my path, to my vector mask, excuse me, um, and this time I want to use the second function, which is add to the shape area. You'll notice if I just create a new shape layer, 
Well, then it creates a new layer over here, and that's really not helpful because I want all of the paths in the same shape layer. So again, I'm going to approximate this oval. Take my best guess, I can always alter it later. And you can see I didn't change the function, so I need to go back and change the function so that it adds this path to the vector mass so that they're on the same layer. Now, to transform the second oval, I need to use my direct selection tool. I'm sorry, my path selection tool, which is the black arrow. Click on that path, and then I can Command T, transform it, rotate it, and again, approximate the bottom of the orange here. Now, here's where you have to start thinking creatively or problem solving creatively. Um, not only to figure out what shapes make up your image, but then also how to combine them together in order to eliminate the parts of the path that you don't want. Um, you can see here I have the two ovals, but if I subtract one from the other, if I set the second one and subtract, it actually inverts the image to where it's filling the outside space and not filling the inside space, so that's definitely not what I want. Um, you can always just play around with what the different options would do. Um, so intersecting the shape areas gives me the top of the orange. That's closer. Um, excluding the shape areas gives me the bottom part of the orange, but also this outside part, which I don't want. So actually, the function that's going to work the best is intersect the shape areas. And then I realized I could take the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, and the direct selection tool allows me to edit and move the anchor points that make up the paths, and I could drag this anchor point outside of the second, the larger oval, and adjust the handles to where it was including that whole orange shape. Okay. So now that I have have that shape created, I don't need the extra parts of the two paths. So again, I'm going to select both paths and combine them. And now I have just the orange shape. Now it's time to think about the negative space or the space that I want to, uh, to be see-through or to show through to the background, which in the case of this orange is going to be these triangles. And I could try to do something like setting this on the polygon tool, setting the sides to three, trying to draw a triangle, um, something like this, maybe then editing the anchor points. Um, I could do that. Um, that would be valid and it would work, but I happen to know an easier way to do it, and that's something where you might check with your instructor to see if the way that you're doing it is the easiest way. And the other way that you can do it is to use the pen tool, which is right here above your type tool. And the pen tool draws paths. Now you want to make sure that your vector mask is selected. Again, you can see that indicated by the brackets around your vector mask. If it's not selected, say you clicked on something else, and maybe you clicked back on the layer, but now you don't have the vector mask selected, when you go to draw a path, or a shape for that matter, it will actually start a new layer and a new vector mask. So that's not what you want to do. You want to make sure that those brackets are around your vector mask. So now I'm ready to start drawing the negative shapes or the holes in my custom shape. And the pen tool draws two different types of points. Corner points and curve points. So anywhere where you want a straight line, you're going to use corner points and you create one by just clicking and releasing, clicking and releasing, and it will draw a straight line path. Then wherever you want a curve, you're going to click and hold and drag out the control handles that you see here. This get, takes a little getting used to to figure out how these handles work. Just know that the handles are not part of the path. Um, they are what control the curve, almost like a wire. If you're pulling um, on a wire to make it, it bend, or maybe like a string and this was the wind blowing. That's the same mathematical principle actually, is a force acting on um, a path. 
So this is going to be my curve, and then I'm going to come around here to another corner point. And then I have another line segment, so I just click and release. And then I see another curve here, so I'm just going to put one more anchor point. And then to close my path, make sure that you see the little round circle when you hover over the anchor point. That means that you're about to close the path. Now you can see this isn't perfect, um, so I can use my direct selection tool to come back and to edit these anchor points. I can move the anchor points around if I didn't get it quite in the right spot, and I can also adjust the handles to make it nice and smooth. I would recommend going around and drawing with your pen tool all of the different areas first, and then coming back with the direct selection tool and adjusting. Just makes it easier so you're not having to switch back and forth between tools all the time. So that's the basic idea. However, you might have noticed that when I started drawing with the pen tool, I had not selected the vector mask. And so I'm going to show you now how to add one path into another uh, vector mask in case this happens to you because I don't want to lose all that work that I just did. So I do have the brackets around this vector mask. I'm going to use the path selection tool to click on that path and select it. I'm going to copy it by holding Command C on my keyboard and then clicking the vector mask that I intended to put it on which had the the larger orange shape and now I'm going to paste that. And if you look very carefully here on the thumbnail, you can see that that path has been pasted in there. So now I can delete this extra layer that I don't need anymore, and now I have my two paths together, the larger orange shape and the smaller wedge. And to make it uh, a negative shape, to make it subtract, I use my path selection tool to click on the path, and then click on the subtract function. Again, I would use the pen tool to go around and draw all these wedges first. Let me just demonstrate that one more time. I'm going to use corner anchor points to draw straight line segments here. And then I'm going to draw a curve that goes all the way around here using one anchor point and dragging out the handles. You want to try to use as few anchor points as possible. So I'm trying to just place anchor points where there's a change that I'm going to need a curve. It gets really tricky if you have more anchor points to, to make this a smooth line. You can see here like this is a little bit weird. I'm going to have to go back in with the direct selection tool and edit that. So the least edits that you can make, uh, the better. It makes it easier and quicker to make your design. So again, click and release for a corner anchor point that makes a straight line segment. Click and release for another one. Click and hold and drag out curve handles for a curved anchor point. Click and release for another straight anchor point, uh, corner anchor point that makes a straight line segment. Click and release. Click and hold for a curved anchor point and then make sure that you close the path um, seeing that little circle on your pen tool. Go around and uh, draw all of these areas that you see here. Then use your direct selection tool to come back and edit those points. I know I'm being a little bit repetitive here, but I hope you understand that uh, this is really complex and it takes a while to be able to understand how these tools work, where to click, when to click, um, and then also uh, just thinking about your design. You can even see here I made the same, same mistake again. I added those shape layers so I could go back and add those, those back into here. So your final result should look something like this. You can see I used the pen tool to draw all of the wedges going around. I then went back in with the direct selection tool and altered um, the anchor points to make all of the lines nice and smooth. I even added a couple of seeds that are not even in the picture, but I think they add a little bit um, of visual interest to the design. And then I decided that I even needed another oval around here. So I actually created two more paths. You can see them right here. Uh, again, to kind of give a balance between the positive and the negative shape and really define my illustration.